Hey guys, here is 3.2 notes. So we are going back to talk about the lines on the transversal. So looking at this guy up here, L would be my transversal because line L is going through line M and line M. However, if we notice here, there's more specific information now. They are telling us that line M is parallel. That's the symbol for parallel right there to line N. So M is parallel to N and then we have a transversal. So because we have a transversal that goes through parallel lines, um, we have some more important information. So this only pertains to parallel lines. So this does not pertain to the information we talked about yesterday. So when we have this information, we know like 1 and 2 are make a line, so they are supplementary. We know 1 and 4 are vertical, so those two are equal. We know 3 and 2 are vertical, so those are equal, and that kind of information. But number 1 does not in any way, shape, or form um, have anything to do with its corresponding angle of 5. However, when we get over here to parallel lines, we're going to learn some more information. 1 and 3 are still equal, 2 and 4 are still equal by vertical, just like 7 and 5 are, and 6 and 8 are. 5 and 6 are supplementary, 5 and 8 are supplementary, 7 and 8 are supplementary, 7 and 6 are supplementary, and then same idea up here. But now that they are parallel, so this guy's parallel to this guy, corresponding angle postulate says if two parallel lines which would be M and N, are cut by transversal, that's transversal 11, the corresponding angle pairs are congruent. Congruent. Okay, so what that means is angle 1 would be congruent to angle 5. Okay, remember corresponding angles. If I put a box around here and a box around here, it's the angles that are in the same parts of the box. So 1 and 5 are in the same parts. Since it's parallel, 1 and 5 are congruent to each other. If I flip back, this is an obtuse angle, this is an acute angle, therefore 1 and 5 are not congruent because M and N are not parallel. Now M and N are parallel, 1 is acute and 5 is acute, but more specifically they are congruent to one another. Okay. Another pair of congruent would be angle 4 with angle 8, angle 2 with angle 6, and angle 3 with angle 7. Okay, all those are corresponding angles, therefore they are equal to one another. Um, since 1 and 5 are congruent to each other because of corresponding, 1 and 3 are also congruent to each other because they are vertical, that would make 1, 3, 5, and 7 really all equal to one another. So when you get into these, you're only going to have two different angle measures. You're going to have the acute angle and then its supplementary obtuse angle. And all angles will be one of those two things. Alternate interior angles, remember interior is on the inside of those two lines, so inside, alternate would be 4 and 6. We'll look at angle 4 and look at angle 6. Angle 4 is obtuse, angle 6 is obtuse, and I just said that all angles are one of two angles, either the acute angle or the obtuse angle. So that would mean that angle 4 is actually going to be congruent to angle 6. And what this statement is saying, or postulate is saying, theorem, if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then alternate interior angles pairs are congruent. If you forget these, I always go back to look at it. Does it look acute or obtuse? Acute angles are going to be equal, obtuse angles are going to be equal. If one is acute and one is obtuse, you know they add up to 180 and they are supplementary. The other angle pair there would be angle 3 with angle 5. Alternate exterior angle theorem, so exterior on the outside. Alternate is opposite, so that would be angle 1 and angle 7, angle 2 and angle 8. We'll look at angle 2. Angle 2 is obtuse. Angle 8 is also obtuse, so those must be our congruent, and 1 and 7 must be congruent. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. And then last one, consecutive angles theorem. Consecutive, remember, means on the inside, so the yellow, and in a line, consecutive. Well, let's look at this. Angle 4 and angle 5 would be my consecutive interior angles. Well, this one's obtuse. This one's not obtuse. It's acute. So what do you think is going to be true about those? If we add them, they equal 180. So if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then consecutive angle pairs are supplementary. Okay.
I'm going to throw in some angle measures. I'm going to say that this is 50 degrees. If I know that that's 50 degrees, I really should be able to answer how many degrees all the other angles are. We know 1 and 3 are vertical, so that has to be 50. We know 1 and 5 are corresponding, so this has to be 50. We know 1 and 7 are alternate exterior, so that also has to be 50. We know 3 and 5 are alternate interior, and we see that they are 50. We know 1 and 2 are supplementary, so that makes that, what, 130? One and, or 2 and 4 would be vertical, so 130. 2 and 8 are alternate exterior, so that's 130. 4 and 6 are alternate interior, so that's 130. So if you notice, they're all one of two angles, either you're acute or you're obtuse. The only time that one won't be acute and one won't be obtuse would be if they're all 90. Because if this is 90, that would make that 90, which would make all of them 90. So they'd all be right angles. And they would be two parallel lines with a perpendicular transversal. All right, solve for x and y. So you have two lines and two transversals. So I'm going to cover this one up. So we're just going to look at these two parallel lines with this transversal. This is on the outside. This is on the outside. They're on opposite sides. So they are alternate exterior. So if I go up here, alternate exterior are congruent. So I'm going to write down 4x minus 52 equals 2x, right? I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides, so I get negative 52 equals negative 2x. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and I get x equals, what is that, 26. If I plug that in, 2 times 26 is 52 degrees. Okay? Uh, if I cover this up, then we have these. These two are consecutive interior, so they add to 180, which should make sense because this is acute and this is obtuse. I now know that this is 52 degrees, so I know that 4y plus 52 should equal 180 because they are supplementary angles. I'm going to subtract 52 from both sides, so I get 4y equals 180 minus 50 is 130, 130 minus 2 is 128. Divide by 4, divide by 4, and I get y equals, okay, 4 goes into 12 three times with none left over. 4 goes into 8 two times. So y equals 32 degrees. All right, so today, let me make sure, I think that's all of those notes. Yep, that's all. So what I want for you to do, there is a 3.2 homework assignment in Schoology, but I also want for you to work on that supplementary packet. Make sure to look, are the lines parallel or are they not parallel? If they're parallel, we have these properties. If they're not parallel, we just can name them for the most part is all we can do. So go ahead and work on that a little bit and um, let me know if you have any questions through email or hopefully I'll try to set up a question and answer session.